Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. In this lesson we are going to learn about the scale tool. It's in here, you can click on this or you can hit R to activate this tool. Be careful when you hit R because if you hit it multiple times then it will go through these selections. The first tool I'm going to show you is the first one and then we are, we'll uh, talk about the rest of them. Uh, let's hit Alt W and maximize this viewport and draw a box or create a box. Uh, let's set the dimensions to 50 by 50 by 50. And hit W and zero the positions. You can see that uh, we have our box sitting the origin of our coordinate system. Now, scale is a little bit uh, of weird tool, let me say. Let me show you why. If you hold shift and create a copy of this box and scale this up, you can do this with hitting R for, uh, if you are not in the scale tool. If you are already in the scale tool, you don't need to, of course. And let's just go right in the middle here. Uh, click and hold and just pull it up or down. This will scale up or down the box. But the problem with this is if you select this box, you will see the dimensions in here. And it, it says 50 by 50 by 50. And also this box has a dimension of 50 for each side as well. But this one is obviously larger than this one, right? So there is a weird conceptual thing or weird way of working with this scale tool. And the thing is, uh, what 3ds Max does when it's drawing a shape is it first creates the object at the pivot point of the object, okay? And then it draws the uh, or creates the things in the modifier tab, what you see in here. And then it applies the transformation tools like or the move rotate or uh, scale tools to the object. So uh, this box is created at the origin or this object is created at the origin. It has a shape of a box. It has 50 by 50 by 50 dimensions and it's scale at 100%. And when you select this box, it's created in the in this uh, position, let's say 80, 0, 0 position. It's, uh, the shape is a box. It has 50 centimeters uh, for each side. Uh, it is 50 centimeters for each side. And then if you hit R, you will see that it has a 165% scale applied on top of it. So that's the order 3ds Max works. So uh, what you see in here may not really be the actual size of the object. Uh, what we do in uh, 3ds Max, uh, you don't generally do this. You uh, use workarounds, but if you go to create, helpers tape you can just measure any side of the uh, edge or any distance uh, with this and you can see that it's 83 centimeters on uh, one edge it's roughly 83 it's not exact but we haven't learned about the snaps yet so we are going to talk about that in future lessons whatever but know that uh, scale is a little bit weird if you are creating uh, rigs if you are creating game uh, characters for example I don't recommend you to use the scale tool on the objects we will use it on the sub objects and it's really okay it's no problem but if you use it on the objects uh, this weird concept uh, will always um, get in your way okay uh, but if you are using Max for visualization purposes then there is no problem you can just use the scale tool as you want uh, shift also works with the scale tool you can hold shift uh, let me hit F3 to go into the wireframe mode to be able to see this better. Uh, if I hold shift and scale this down and create three copies, for example, you can see that we can still do that with this. Uh, I'll hit Ctrl Z, undo for this. Undo the um, scaling cloning thing. Uh, let me show you how to apply this to the sub-objects. Uh, right now we don't really know about the sub-objects, but you can uh, always select the vertices edges or the faces of the objects if you apply an edit poly modifier on top you can go in uh, to any of these sub object modes uh, by the way the way i did this is i will click on the modifier list type in ed and i found this uh, edit poly in here and when you apply this you can see that over the box we have an edit poly modifier and we can go ahead and select the sub objects of the object itself so let's go into the polygon mode for example and select this polygon and if you scale this you can see that you will sh you can change the shape you can of course apply the move or the rotate tools or transformations as well in here uh, but the reason i shown you the uh, scale tool is let's delete this and hit uh, 
apply and it's poly on top of this box. Hit four. This is the shortcut for the polygon mode, by the way. And let's scale this up. What you will see that uh, is that the scale of the original object hasn't changed. You only change the scale of this face. And this is how we create organic shapes or this is how we create any shape in 3ds Max. We will talk about this editable poly a lot uh, in the future lessons. Okay, let's hit undo again or just even you can just delete this uh, modifier uh, hitting this uh, button in here. Uh, what more we can say uh, about scale is it has three different modes. Uh, we talked about this in the beginning of the lesson. What these uh, other uh, scale tools do is if you are in the first scale type, uh, which is the uniform scale, by the way, uh, when you type in something in here, let's say we want to type in 120, you can see that this scale percent is applied to each axis of the object. Okay, because it's uniform. We said that we don't want to mess with the shape of the object. Let's create a teapot, for example. Let's create a more distinct shaped object. And this is the teapot we will use. And if you just type in 120 in here, you will see that uh, the object will get larger uniformly, right? It didn't change the shape, didn't mess with the shape. But you can see that the, if you hold these axis axis in here, uh, Y, X and the Z axis, or X, Y, Z axis, you can uh, scale this object non-uniformly in one axis only. You can change the shape of it, you can stretch the object, let's say. And you can, if you read the value in here, you can see that we can manipulate one of the axes separated, uh, or we can change only one of the axes. Let's say uh, we can break the link between these two three axes. Okay, and the way to do it with exact values inputting in here is you need to go to the second mode of the scale, which is non-uniform scale. And right now you can see that these three slots are all available to us. And we can just type in 170, for example, in here and hit enter. And you can see that we have scaled the object in only one axis. Okay, I can do it in the uh, Z axis as well. Let's type in 200 in here. And you can see that we uh, could manage to do that as well. Let's delete this and create a normal teapot. By the way, you, don't, you didn't need to delete it. You can just type in 100, 100, and 100 to get it to, back to uh, its original size. But you could just delete and uh, draw a new one as well. Uh, let's select the third one. And this one is squash and stretch, uh, which means if you scale this object in one axis, the other X size will try to keep the volume, total volume of the object same. Okay. This way you can do cute animations for it. Let me show that to you. It's very cool. Uh, let's create an uh, animation. I'm just showing this for fun. You don't need to follow this or you don't need to even learn this if you are trying to just get in, uh, models or strip frames. But let's have some fun because why not? And if we don't have fun learning, then what's the purpose of it, right? So if you click on the auto key button in here and drag the uh, timeline to 10, for example, you can just press this down and let's do it uh, go into the 15, uh, 15 frame and let's pull this up to the 20th frame, down to 15, and let's get, get this back to its original size. Okay, now let's play this. I'm going to just, uh, you can just see this, uh, what this is, just dragging this as well, but uh, I recommend you to play this uh, from here, play animation. If you click on it, you will see that it animates, but let's put the 25 to the end of the, Timeline to do that. I'll right click on this play button and type in 25 to this end time but slot and now if I play it will uh, Loop and you can see that we created a <laughs> cool animation Okay, uh, what I did in here was just let's do that again just for fun purposes I really like to get out of the subject and talk about these things because makes it so much fun for me And I want to make you have fun uh, from it as well so I, what I did is I selected the object, I hit auto key and I pulled the uh, timeline to 10 and just scale this down. I pulled this to 15, scale, uh, pull this up, change the time to 20, pull this down and then 25 to get it back to its original size. And I'm just eyeballing it and reading the values in here, by the way, I'm not, uh, not with the exact values, but you could input some values as you know. 
And also what you can do is you can hold shift and copy this frame to here as well, but it's a little bit advanced, I guess, but whatever. And now you can see that we created this animation. Okay. Very cool. Try this exercise, by the way. It will make you understand uh, scale a little bit better, in my opinion. Thanks for listening. If you find this uh, lesson useful uh, or fun, as I told you, uh, please hit the like button. Uh, you can hit su the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel. And also, please click on the bell sign near the subscribe button to enable the notifications from our channel. Uh, thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.